how can we create a video game? Maybe you got inspired by playing another game or suddenly you came up with an amazing idea that just needs to happen. Today it can be quite overwhelming with all the information that is out there and all the options to choose between. In this video I'm really trying to simplify how we can make our first game in five easy steps. It's not easy to create a game but these steps makes it easier and they are easy to follow. The hard part about making games is that you over scope, you make it way bigger than you actually want to do. And I think the fourth step will really surprise you. Before we get too much into the video, I want to briefly talk about why we make games. And people create games for various reasons, but the most obvious and the biggest reason is probably that it's a lot of fun. Games are incredible in the way that it can give us experiences we otherwise wouldn't be able to get. It can bring people together and inspire. Most of us have experiences with games that were really positive and that we will never forget. It's truly amazing that we can create games from our bedrooms. And I love that I hopefully can inspire new aspiring game developers to get started. I'm very keen to figure out who you are. You should join the conversation in the comments below. I'll leave my own introduction there as well so you can read a little bit about me. If you ever wanted to create games, now is the perfect time to do so. So let's get into it. First of all, congratulations with figuring out that you want to make games. The first step is to come up with a game idea. Maybe you already got one. If you don't, don't worry, you can start up with a really simple idea. And if you don't have any ideas at all, I'll suggest doing something like an endless runner or a ball game where you collect coins. You can steal either of those ideas. But before you do that, we need to consider step two. Games are created using game engines. When you are creating a game, you are creating a bunch of assets. That could be characters, sounds and so forth. The engine is what makes sense of those assets. You put them all in the engine and then you code the behavior you want in the engine. You do that using code language. There are a bunch of engines out there and it can be really hard to choose. Just know that you don't have to stick with one engine for the rest of your life. You can try it out and try another one. Ultimately, you want to choose an engine that contains the feature you need for your game. If I know that I'm good at drawing, it would be a good idea to go with an engine that can handle 2D graphics very well, like Unity. If you don't have much experience with 3D graphics, I wouldn't suggest doing that as your first game. But if you do, Unreal is a great choice. A new upcoming engine is Godot, which is open source and a lot of people really like it. That's worth checking out as well. If you have experience in a coding language, that play a role as well. On the other hand, if you aren't really tech savvy or into code, you can select an engine that supports visual scripting, like Blueprints in Unreal or Bolt in Unity. The third step is to actually get started and doing some game development. If you can't come up with a game idea, you can search for your engine and look for beginner tutorials and follow along and it will teach you the basics and teach you to create simple games. If you do have a game idea, you can search on how to create the specific game in your engine. For example, if you're doing a side scroller, there's a ton of tutorials on how to do exactly that. Once you see a couple of tutorials, you get familiar with the engine and it's time to actually create your game. If your game is complicated, you might need to start over. I suggest keeping it really simple in the beginning and not creating a too complicated game like a RPG. Try to create a version of your game that contains the core game mechanics. For an endless runner, that would be the control of the player, getting a score and an endless environment. The fourth step is optional, but it's something that I really encourage you to do because it's a big part of game development. And that is playtesting. You find somebody to play your game, it could be friends, family or somebody random on the internet and then you ask them for feedback afterwards. If they found bugs or something like that, make sure to write it down and try to fix it at a later point. You improve your game massively and you'll learn that players often play your game differently than how you would play it. Often a lot of weird stuff will happen in your game, but don't worry, it's part of the process and it's quite normal. The final step is to release your game, which is really exciting. A good platform to release your game on is its.io 
or gamejolt.com. They're both very indie friendly and they're both free to release your game on. Make sure to ask for feedback as well because learning from this experience will make you a better game developer. If nobody plays your game, don't be discouraged. There's areas on the internet where you can go and ask for people to play it and just that you make this game in itself is incredible and you should be really proud because I'm proud of you. The fact that you created something from nothing is amazing. Subscribe if you want to learn more about game development and documenting the journey of creating my next game. I have this devlog that I think you should watch next, which is about finding the fun in the game. And you should watch it right now because this video is over. See ya!